Zion By the rivers of Babylon Where we sat down Here we wait When we remembered Zion Carried us away captivity Require from us a song How shall we sing the Lord's song In a strange land We are in Montserrat, a British overseas territory in the Eastern Caribbean. Our neighbors are Antigua over there and Guadeloupe, French-speaking Guadeloupe. And like Montserrat, they are part of a smaller group called the Lesser Antilles. Specifically, we are at Jack Boy Hill, a strategic location where people come, both local persons and visitors, to view the mountain, particularly when it is glowing in the night. Everybody assumes that Montserrat is covered in ash and that we're all waiting on the beach for the next passing boat to evacuate. People in the other islands, they think we're living in dust, we're living in fear, and this is totally out of, totally not the truth. This island is green, it's flush, it's beautiful. We've had a couple of cases where the volcano acted up and we've got dustings. Nothing that, it's a lot better than a snowstorm. We can clean up in a day or two and then we're back in business. We were living in St. Martin and we were thinking about coming home, but the thing is, we heard so much about the volcano, we heard so many different things, no one's here, the place is all abandoned. So we were thinking, what would it be like? When investors hear Montreal, they think that there's nothing there. There are no opportunities. Many express surprise at the level of activity that goes on. It can be bustling, it can be thriving. They are surprised at the skill levels coming out of the schools. And um, they are surprised that we have access to regional markets because we are members of CARICOM and we are members of the OECS. The perception around the world is that Montserrat is destroyed. We've actually had people think no one lives here. The Weather Channel, once a hurricane was coming by, and the guy said, oh, we don't have to worry about Montserrat because no one lives there anymore. He got about a thousand emails. I hear all the time people coming to Antigua and being told that there's no reason to go to Montserrat. There's, there's, no, there's nobody on the island. The island's been evacuated. There's nothing to do there. And when they come, they're so pleasantly surprised. And we're hoping that those of you who are able to view just a small portion of this will better understand what it means to rebuild a whole new island from scratch. This is Montserrat. This is our opportunity. It is our challenge. But we are resilient. We rise to challenges and we create out of disaster. There were one or two songs which could only have been done in Montserrat. Jimmy Buffett recorded an album called Volcano, which was much too prophetic for my words. In order to understand the scope of the recovery and rebuilding that this island has been through and still is in that process, we, we need to have some understanding also of the scope of the disaster. And I sometimes love to think of the losses and refer to them as a litany of losses. First of all, there is a geographical loss, a loss of habitable space, because although we had 39.5 square miles, this was reduced as far as habitation was concerned to perhaps just about a third. 
There are 17 square miles that will never be evacuated. It's considered by the scientists as without risk. That is bigger than St. Martin. St. Martin is only 16 square miles. Bermuda, Bermuda is 21 square miles and Bermuda has 70,000 people. There's also a demographic loss. We lost population from 11.5 thousands or thereabout. The population went as low as 3,000. The rest of us who stayed, it became less and less. So our chief minister approached all the other prime ministers in the other islands and begged them, please send people to help us rebuild. And so we had an influx of people from other islands, and that's what saved us. Then there was loss in agriculture. Assembly type industries located in Plymouth just went because the place had to be abandoned. The, the loss of the ports, both Plymouth and Bramble Airport, affected the economy, they affected tourism. And tourism was further affected by the loss of the hotels. I joined the Foreign Office 23 odd years ago now, and when I joined I was a legal advisor, and I covered the Caribbean. And in covering the Caribbean, I covered the then dependent territories. One of those was Montserrat. I came and I fell in love. And when the opportunity came up to come back, I seized it. The reality is that this is possibly the toughest assignment that I've had. And that includes places like Nigeria, like Iraq, uh, like Pakistan. And the reason for that is that you're, you're dealing with a very small territory which has had a huge impact on its population. And the principal cause for the trauma is carrying on in the background. It is no small effort for any monstration living here who would have lost a lot as a result of the volcanic crisis to try and rebuild. And I think the masquerade is an enduring symbol of what it will take us in order to move forward. You know, sometimes we will have to don our masks, we will have to dress up, we will have to put on our reflectors and our mirrors to not only look at where we've come from, but look into the future of, you know, kind of where we need to be. We are now not just here clinging on some rock trying to survive. Life here is rich. Because we lost so much, we are now understanding that we must appreciate what we have today and enjoy it. Sufri Hills Volcano has been one of the most active volcanoes in the world over the past 13 years, really. So it's, uh, it's an absolutely fantastic natural lab. Montserrat has been badly affected by the volcano, that is true, but it's mainly the south of the island, so actually people have a totally normal life in most of the rest of the island on the northern part of it. So if you live in the northern part of the island, it's exactly the same type of risk of like being in Antigua. <laughs>